Good morning and welcome to St Dunstan's on this lovely sunny day. And good morning to you all watching online, wherever you are. On Wednesday, we have no lunch club in the hall this week, but we do have a seaside day out at Chris's Beach Hut. So dust off your buckets and spades, get ready to go out there for a lovely afternoon in the sun. Um, all the details that you need for that are in the bulletin. And also, there are details in the bulletin about our quiet day, which is at the Quiet View at Nonnington on the 12th of August. Please if, do consider coming to that, and if you want more details, ask Reverend Joe. Thank you. That's all the notices for this morning. Loving God, as we come together this morning, we pray that you go before us in the liturgy of the word and in the liturgy of the sacrament, in your name. The Lord be with you. And I reiterate Sue's well, warm welcome to you all. It's lovely to see you today. And for those of you watching online and don't know me, my name's Reverend Joe Richards, Rector here in Canterbury of St Dunstan's, St Mildred's and St Peter's. As we live stream from St Dunstan's this morning, welcome to you too. So as we gather together for our Eucharist, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we reflect upon the time that has been, seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, if you're able, to stand for the Gloria. We say together, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the way of your laws and the works of your commandments. And through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, 
we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for our readings. first reading comes from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you, in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on this his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to come out or go in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, and for who can govern this great people of yours. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words, and God, who searches hearts, knows what's in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. God's love is Christ Jesus. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who, he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, or rather who was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, and who, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction, will affliction, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
you have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He then told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe, who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit down. Back in February 2021, it was our daughter's 21st birthday. And, but because of lockdown, although we'd put the day aside to share with her in Norwich, we were unable to. Um, she was there and we were here and we weren't able to meet. So Jim and I went for a walk and needless to say, we found an acorn. And I thought, well, if I can't see her on her birthday, I'll plant an acorn tree or an oak tree. So two years later, this is what has grown and will no doubt continue to grow. And uh, she will, I'm sure at one point, take it to her own home. But that was a tree planted just under two years ago, or just over two years ago. Acorns are tiny, but not nearly as tiny as the mustard seed that we heard about today. And the mustard seed of Palestine is very different from the mustard seed that we can find in this country. The seed of the cypress tree is said to be the tiniest, smallest seed. But in Jewish culture, if something is as tiny as tiny as can be, it was the mustard seed. And the mustard seed would grow to about six meters or 20 feet high. And the birds would surround it and eating and love just to surround the whole tree and eat all the little seeds that it produced. This parable tells us that the kingdom of heaven begins very, very small, but grows and grows and grows. I wonder how often can something that is very small grow to something so very large. It's often an idea that is prompted by the spirit and grows. Back in the 1980s, it was the British anti-apartheid movement that persuaded individuals, organizations, political structures, and governments to take whatever actions would be necessary 
to achieve the isolation and weakening of the apartheid state. Such measures eventually led to forcing South Africa to the point of dismantling its oppressive regime. Looking back to the 1960s, the Baptist minister, Martin Luther King, I had a dream speech, initiated the integration and, un and unified America. The schoolgirl, Greta Thunberg, who sat quietly outside her school every Friday, thus drawing attention to the climate crisis. Mary Sumner, who in 1876 sat, set up a group to support mothers of all kinds in bringing up their children. This developed into the Mother's Union, now found in 83 countries worldwide who, stop, who work towards stopping poverty, stopping inequality, and stopping injustice. Dame Celia Saunders, the Christian woman after reading Psalm 37, commit the way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In 1967, she went on to establish St. Christopher's Hospice, the, words, the world's first purpose-built hospice. Or even locally, here at St. Dunstan's, 40, nearly 40 years ago, Chris Todd had the idea of mother and toddler group. 40 years on, it is thriving, drawing mums, dads, grandparents from across country, uh, from across Canterbury. And one thing they say, it is the love and wisdom shown to us by those who are there and supporting and helping us. So a huge thank you, I think, to Chris and the team for the work that they do and the Christian witness that is Tiny Tots. Never must we say that I am too small to make an impact. For God has planted these seeds and seeds that are nurtured and loved grow into trees. We must be mindful of the words from Jeremiah for I know the plans I have for you. Often the greatest of things begin with small beginnings. And I wonder if you have planted the seeds of faith in someone and seen them flourish and blossom. Something that can often take years and something that takes an awful lot of patience. Look what Jesus achieved in those three years. Twelve people, that's less than us sitting here in church today. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, and 2,000 years later, there are 2.6 billion Christians worldwide. Jesus, the Son of God, entered the world a baby, born to an unmarried teenage mother. He was a refugee. He was God incarnate and changed the world. Jesus is saying to his disciples and to his followers today that there must be no discouragement. We must serve and witness in our very own small way because it's from such small beginnings that great things happen and the kingdom of God becomes established and grows. How this happens is through transformation, which brings us on to the second parable in today's gospel, the transforming power of God. This parable focuses on the transforming power of yeast. Yeast changes the character of the whole baking process. Unleavened bread without the yeast is not dissimilar to pitted bread can sometimes be hard and dry and unappetizing, whereas leavened bread is soft, porous, and spongy and good to eat. 
the introduction of the yeast causes a transformation in the dough. That seed of faith that is planted by the power of the Holy Spirit can cause transformation of life. And this was most evidenced by four great social directions in which, down the years, Christianity has transformed life. It's transformed life for women. The Jew, in his morning prayer, would thank God that he had not been made a Gentile, a slave, or a woman, but not Jesus, born of a woman and had numerous interactions with women in which he liberated and affirmed them. The woman at the well is just one example, and his first post-resurrection appearances were to women, commissioning them to go and tell the disciples that he had risen. Christianity transformed the life of the weak and the ill. In pagan life, they were considered a nuisance and often disposed of. It was the Christian, Vibola, who is said to have founded the first hospital, and Aponius was the first to found a dispensary, another Christian, transforming people's lives. Christianity transformed the life of the elderly. Once their working lives were finished, they were con considered a burden and a nuisance. But Christianity saw people for who they were, made in the image of God. Children, Jesus said, let the children come to me, demonstrating his inclusive love to all, particularly those who are marginalized. This too is our mission and ministry, as it has been for the church down the ages. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God works in us to transform lives, be it in a tiny, small way that can grow and grow over time to become and grow the kingdom of God, a place of love, justice, and peace for all. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit for our intercessions.
Heavenly Father, thank you that you promised that wherever two or three are gathered together, you are in the midst of them. As we gather to pray this morning, we pray that we, like Solomon, would ask for the right things. We too pray for wisdom and discernment, to be alert to the needs of others and how we can be instrumental in meeting those needs. Thank you that when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Loving Lord, thank you that we are part of your worldwide family. We pray for Christians across the world where it is difficult to worship, where they face persecution and discrimination. We pray that you would give them strength and hope and that the difficulties they face will be removed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of the Mother's Union throughout the world as they seek to strengthen family life and improve the lives of women and children. We pray for their work in educating women, helping them to start their own small businesses and in their campaigning to end gender-based violence against women and girls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for Joe and Jenny and our ministry team. Give them wisdom to know how to lead us in the right direction and to consolidate the benefits. And we pray especially for Jenny as she will soon begin the process of discerning your will for her next steps when her curacy comes to an end next year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for ourselves and for each other. Help us to be good listeners, loyal friends, and to speak words of kindness and encouragement to one another. We pray for those in our benefice who are unwell, and those who care for them, and for all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Thank you for all who have gone before us in this church, who have been faithful witnesses to the gospel and caring custodians of this beautiful building and its churchyard. Help us to follow in their footsteps, assured of your help and guidance every day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to stand for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace to those online. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread 
of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Take to yourself, O Lord, the gifts your people offer, that in this holy sacrament we may enter the mystery which we profess with devotion and faith. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please sit, kneel or stand as you feel comfortable for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Dunstan, St. Mildred, St. Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We welcome all whose tradition it is to receive. If you'd rather receive a blessing, please just bring up your order of service.
Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please stand if able for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all of those that you care, love, and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.